Okay, everyone. Hello, hello. This is Lizian and Julie. We're just setting up right here, right now. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. You're all welcome. This is an international community, and we have the pleasure of having people from all around the world. This is the beauty of internet. And we're setting up right now, and yes, we are live. So, Welcome everyone. This is Lisiane Donadeyak, burnout recovery coach with a background in holistic nutrition. And today we have another episode interview of the Burning to Shining Talks with Julie Pekarski. And we're going to talk about how to lose weight when feeling burnt out. Because if you're feeling tired, anxious, overwhelmed with tons of pain and aches in your body for too long, which is really what I call being burnt out, you've probably noticed that your clothes have become tight and you have an accumulation of fat around your belly, your thigh, your buttocks maybe, and wondering what you can do to stop that because that's not pleasant for us. And you know that's not your ideal weight. It didn't used to be like that. So what's going on right here right now? And so here I am with my guest, uh, Julie, who is going to explain, who is really working specifically on that and is going to help us figuring that out. So Julie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Um, I would like to start with a, a question for you. Uh, can you introduce yourself with your name, where you live, and how you would describe yourself as a woman? We here we're trying to get away from our job titles as the first and sole definition of who we are to get more into the multiple dimensions of our being. I love that. That's such a great question. Uh, well, I'm Julie Pekarski, and I live in Vancouver, BC, Canada. So I am Lucienne's neighbor, kind of right? <laughs> and I mean, how would I describe myself as a woman? This is such a good question because, and I love the removing of, you know, letting go of the title. That's really profound. So I would say I'm definitely an ambitious woman, but I'm sprinkled with a bit of free spirit. Mm. So I'm very much an A-type woman, but I really do love connecting with my intentions. Um, you know, and I'm trying to live with a little bit more, less hustle and a lot more intention. So that's oftentimes you know, if you follow me, it tends to be my platform besides weight loss. So, right. Um, and I love how you say uh, a type woman, a type A woman. <laughs> um, and I want to dig a little bit more uh, into that if you're okay with that, because I remember the first time I heard about it, because that's not a thing we say in France. Um, but I heard about it in working in the visual effects industry, uh, my past career, and it always came from other type A women being like, I'm a, a type A woman, I'm an A type woman, and, and you probably are too. So they were recognizing something into me. And with that vocal, vocal, <clears throat> I, I understood what they meant, but I never actually got into the definition of where it came from. Do you know where, where that is? I, I don't know where it came from, but I can tell you it's more of sometimes it's a, it's a perception from, you know, one woman to, to another. I find it only is used about women versus men, which I think right? is really interesting. Yeah. Um, and I think it is, it's an, it's an ambitious woman who's got goals, who's very focused, very razor sharp. Um, at the same time, that tends to be the type of woman that burns out quickly. Um, uh, and I'm a, I say a victim of burnout, but that's probably not the word I should use, but I, and that's part of the reason why you and I connected is that I, I definitely know what burnout feels like, was diagnosed with um, extremely low cortisol um, and, and still working on that. And it's a slippery slope, but really what I, I introduced in those types of A-type ambitious, ambitious women is a little bit living with a little bit more intention, building routines, you know, connecting with themselves so that you can serve others better. Right. Right. Um, and I don't think a type's a bad thing, but I think there is a, there is a bit of a balance because I also think that if you're a leader in particular, or an entrepreneur, I think all women are leading women, whether it's in your home or in your business or in your job. And I think that we still have to lead with empathy um, you know, in love. And so I think it's always going to be a tricky balance. So I think you and I are very similar in that, in that realm where we try and embrace that A-type. It's a good thing because we want to, you know, get stuff done. 
um, and we want to live a big life. But at the same time, we also, you know, we want to tap into our feminine power at the same time. Right. So type A sounds like A for ambitious. And yes. this is not something we're willing to reconsider. We're ambitious. We're proud of it. We're driven. We're goal driven. Mm -hmm. We're passionate. We're enthusiastic. We're positive. But then if we push too hard, too long, that's where we can become burnt out and yeah. when we lose our inner stamina, our inner strength. So jumping into your, you touched a little bit on this, but jumping into your professional expertise, what is your career choice in the health and wellness industry and how would you explain what you do? So like yourself, I'm a registered holistic nutritionist, which was something I transitioned in several years ago. I've actually worked in uh, human resources and operations um, with like some of the largest companies in the world, actually. Um, but I was drawn, obviously, to to nutrition. Um, and then I really wanted to specialize in weight loss. Uh, specifically for ambitious women. So I work specifically with ambitious women to help them lose stress related weight um, with a balanced approach to weight loss. And what that means is that I don't believe, and I have multitude of examples, um, that you don't necessarily have to give up everything that you love and feel restricted uh, and deprived in order to lose weight. Um, we're human, right? So we, you know, restrictions are never going to be a good thing. And if you're somebody who is burned out, restricting yourself um, nutritionally is never a good thing. Um, and I, you know, a lot of you know women that I work with, you know, they network, and you know, there's always cocktails and appetizers and all those things. And it's like you can enjoy those things but there is a method and a, and a balance in order to do that. And right. I feel like a bit of freedom with that too as well. Right, and what I find interesting in, your, in the way you qualify yourself, uh, women's weight loss and energy coach is that with the weight loss, you can find another type of energy and strength, the stamina we were talking about. Well, you know, it is so interesting that you say that is that the number one, um, I guess, what's the word, the number one effect that they get, you know, women get within um, the programs that I run is energy. It's the number one thing that gets boosted, right? The weight loss. And then the weight loss, of course, happens along the way, because it's not something weight loss is not something you can achieve in 21 days. <laughs> um, you certainly can see some some changes for sure. And that's such a motivating factor for a lot of women. But the energy is a completely different story. That's usually number one. Right. Um, and for all the women watching right now who will be watching the replay later on that will be automatically posted in the group, please let us know in the comments if you have a question for myself or for Julie, if it's something personal, something very specific. Um, towards the end of the interview, we'll look at um, the comments on the Facebook group and try to answer as many as we can. Um, so thank you so much, Julie. This is absolutely true. I and I think like once we find this energy, it's almost like the weight is not such an important thing anymore. We don't we don't have to focus anymore because we have the energy to focus on all the other things in our life. Good point. Um, so women who feel chronically anxious, tired and overwhelmed, which is really like burnt out, all often put on weight. Would you be able to explain what is the link between burnout and weight gain? Yeah, lots. There's so many things that I was like, I, I could go on a, this is like my, my favorite thing to talk about. Um, and you know, the one, I think women have to understand the relation uh, to stress and weight gain, yes. or your inability to lose weight. There's two, two things, right? Um, so I'm going to sort of break it down. But you know, I always, <laughs> I always think when you have any of those things, sorry, my light just fell. Um, you know, when you are stressed, anxious, overwhelmed, all of those things, the last thing you want is a salad, right? So generally speaking, we're craving sweets and definitely salty processed foods. I think I'm sure at some point, uh, you know, women have learned that when, you know, you're dealing with burnout, you tend to crave salty things too as well. So there's definitely a connection with anxiousness and fatigue with imbalanced blood sugar. 
So insulin levels just being all over the place. Um, so blood sugar management's really important in this case. Um, several years ago, I was dealing with massive anxiety, like massive panic, like panic attacks and anxiety attacks. And there were two things that happened for me. When I, at the time I was vegan and I'm, I'm not saying vegan is, is uh, something that would boost anxiousness, but I definitely wasn't eating a very vegan, like balanced vegan approach where I was incorporating, you know, healthy fats and health, healthier proteins and things like that. Um, when I started to adjust my plate slightly, um, the anxiety definitely dissipated. Um, that's, that's one thing, especially if you're dealing with anxiety. The other thing is this hormones. I mean, as women, we're dealing with an array of hormones. And so depending on your menstrual cycle, you will find obviously progesterone, which can sometimes be connected to anxiety when progesterone drops, it can trigger anxiety. So that's also, you also have to think there's a lot of things going on in the body, a woman's body in particular, that's so different than a man, right? Um, that we also have to consider. But then there's our stress hormone cortisol, which if it's elevated or low, that will impact blood sugar. So that's why, you know, when we're feeling very stressful, it's very important to take deep breaths, you know, and, and calm the nervous system down and, you know, tame the cortisol levels. Um, but also if we're in really high gear and our cortisol levels are elevated all the time and too high, too low, too long, what happens is that the body starts to protect us. And it doesn't know the difference between like a really, really strict deadline that we're stressed about or being chased by a bear. The body won't know the difference. It just feels stress. It's got elevated cortisol and then it starts to protect the body. So it's actually going to hold on to fat. Generally midsection, that's where a lot of women tend to find it um, because also the body's less you know, uh, doesn't prioritize digestion. So it tends to stick in that area too, as well. And it will actually hold on to fat. So a lot of times, you know, I, uh, you know, women who are trying to lose weight and their midsection is their trouble area. I always ask them, what's your stress level? Like if it's seven and above, you need to work on the stress before you work on the weight loss. So I, sort of a, yeah. So to summarize, we have the key component is blood sugar levels and blood sugar levels vary in um, depending on how much carbohydrates that will turn into glucids, which is the, like the smallest molecule of sugar um, into your bloodstream to provide your brain and muscle cells with energy to keep going. Carbohydrates are the ferret as the number one uh, macronutrients for energy, right? And so depending on how much we have of energy available in our blood, the body will have different hormones at play that can either make us crave more food or, or cut off our appetite, right? And then it's also about the balance of the stress hormones that will tell the blood, like the body to release storages of glucid that we already have in us to give our brain the ability to think fast our muscles to fight so that we can get into the stress mode which is like fighting fly, fleeing away um and and respond to the danger the perceived danger right mm -hmm. but it's also only perceived stress and i love your example with the bear chasing us because that's a very canadian one <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're People right. Say lion or whatever, walls, but new, well, Canadians proud the bears are around. We need to be careful with that. Well, you know, and I always use that because if you think back in like, you know, the caveman days, that was the only stressor really um, was wildlife, you know, and it was also a time where they ate one meal a day. There was no such thing as snacking right? There it wasn't like a three meal a day snacks in between all of that situation. Their like stress was running, literally running from a bear. And, and that's the analogy I use because our culture has changed so much when it comes to stress and when it comes to food. Absolutely. And um, what I like as well is, um, is the notion that as women, our hormones are very uh, are varying according to the month, and mm -hmm. our whole society is around the male hormonal system, which is a twenty four hour loop. 
But for women, it's like 28, 24, 32, depending on what your cycle is. And we need to take that into account. And we have someone watching right now, Liz, who's saying that she definitely feels that she has more anxiety during her periods. She can feel the boost in cortisol and that's impacting her hunger, but also her sleep. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting with, um, so be, besides the blood sugar management for me, when it came to anxiety, the, the second thing that I did, and, and I'm sure, uh, I know, Lysiane, you, you promote uh, testing, uh, tests don't guess, right? Especially when it comes to cortisol levels and things like that. Originally, when I went to seek help, it was because of my cycle being um, just completely off the charts. I'd never had an issue with it before. I'd never been on birth control, n none of that. And then all of a sudden it was like a f flip of a switch. And I went in for you know uh, my, my cycle issues and I came out with extremely like de depleted cortisol. Except what happens is, is that with cortisol, when you start losing cortisol or when it starts getting imbalanced, it steals from other hormones. So my actually, my issue was my stress and my burnout and my extremely low cortisol levels that were basically stealing my progesterone away, which then impacted my cycle. What was interesting, I started on progesterone therapy, so hormonal replacement therapy. And as soon as I started taking that, that's when my uh, anxiety like disappeared. Right. So I still get it from time to time. Um, but now I know it's usually like leading into my cycle. And like, if I start to feel it, I go to my cycle tracker. And then I'm like, well, it makes sense. Right. right. Um, at the same time, you know, doing hormonal replacement therapy is helpful. But at the same time, you still have to deal with the stress related issues that you're going to the band-aids we still want to yes. go to the core the root causes of what's happening in the body to rebalance the hormones exactly another thing you said about weight gain is the accumulation around this the midsection um and what i heard and i thought was really interesting is that if you think about it the body wants to protect us by all, at all costs it, it's here to make us alive so whatever we throw at it, it will deal with it. And that's when women tend to hate their body, scapegoat it. Like, I don't understand my body. Why is it hating me so much? It's like, no, it's supporting you in whatever your choices are, right. conscious or unconscious. And so when we are feeling so stressed out, the body has to protect what? The reproductive organs. Because your brain is protective, protected with your skull. It's pretty safe. Your lungs and heart are protected with your ribcage, pretty safe. But all your digestive system and your reproductive uh, system is in your lower belly. Hence, the accumulated fat around this area of the thighs, the buttocks, and the belly. Mm -hmm. Because it needs padding, it needs insulation, it needs comfort. And if you ever need emergency energy and you haven't eaten in days for any reason, because that's the normal process of stress management of the body, the fact that you have your fat storages that can be turned into glucose, sugar, energy in the digestive system, it's, it's really close, it's really available. So when you see yourself in the mirror inflating in that area, know that mm -hmm. it's your body protecting you from yourself. And I feel like it's, it's so much easier to see it being like, okay, well, I'm going to protect you as well. And I'm going to yeah. deal with my stressors so that we can do this together. Yeah. And I think it's really important that you make that connection too, as well. Like if you've had a very stressful day um, and you feel like just feel extra bloated in that area and then connect that to the day that you had you know, and then you can understand a lot of that is within your own control in some cases, right? There's lots of techniques. I'm sure you, you, um, yeah. And, uh, we have, um, someone watching saying that, uh, her body is always tense no matter what I do. And then she has noticed the accumulation of weight around her stomach and thighs only. So that's, so that's when you come from a type A lady to a type C type C <laughs> cortisol, right? Did you read that book? 
<laughs> no, no. Talk about it. So like, especially like courses all around and what it happens. So you, you, it's great that you're type A. It's not so great when you go too far that you go in the burnout zone and you become a type C type cortisol person, because that's when you overwhelmed by cortisol in your whole body and you on stress response, no matter what happens. And imagine like zebras don't burn out. And I love that. They don't put on weight. They don't burn out. Even if they're chased by a lion in a savanna and they're running around, next thing they know, they go back to grazing and it's fine. They don't fall like in crying and being miserable on their life on this planet. What we do <laughs> when we get into burnout crisis and we feel totally depressed. So what we want is to regulate this amount of cortisol, the stress hormones in our body so that we are more type Z. <laughs> Can I throw that out there? <laughs> a type zebra person who can really like not only manage the stress but master it and for this person who's watching us and say my body is always tense is that you haven't gone to the root causes of why it's holding the tension and I think that's really important for that so Definitely. thank you so much Julie we we explained a little bit of the metabolic uh, and biological processes, hormonal processes at play when we put on weight, when we're feeling uh, stressed out, chronically stressed out and burned out. Now, I want to ask you, Julie, um, what are your top three strategies um, for women to start losing weight when they're already tired and anxious all the time, when they feel like they've tried everything? Yeah. So I, I always sort of go a three prong approach. It's always nutritional, you know, uh, physical, and then, you know, our, our mindset or our lifestyle. So let's start with a little bit on the lifestyle side. And I know you're going to totally agree with this one, which is if you're dealing with burnout or your anxious anxiety, all of those things, uh, rest and repairs, number one, because you actually can't lose weight without healing first and reducing it. So you have to treat the underlying causes. Um, in a lot of cases, there's infl inflammation buildup in women that if you're not taming the inflammation, you're not going to, you're not going to lose the weight. If you do, it might be marginally as the because body adjusts. One of the main sign of inflammation is swelling. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Lots, lots of uh, swelling is a big one. Um, and then if you are from an exercise standpoint, this is the thing. Because at the end of the day, most, I feel like most women, certainly from my experience working with the women that I do is that they just assume that they just have to hit up their exercise in high drive and start running 10 Ks or hitting the gym for an hour and a half or whatever the case may be. But that's not the case. I literally see profound changes with women's weight simply by walking. Yes. And that's, that's it. Getting out into nature, getting outside, Getting the natural light, obviously we know just getting outside tames our cortisol levels just naturally as it is. Being in nature helps that too as well. But pushing ourselves too much in, in the exercise world can actually tap out our cortisol even more. So some of the things that I think about when it comes to that, like if you are pushing it too much is one, you're exhausted after you work out and you can't recover from what your workout, those are generally indicators of pushing it too much in your exercise. So oftentimes what I do for the first month anyways, within a program is just focus on 30 to 40 minutes of walking and that's it. Um, and that in itself can be a game changer right there. Um, the second is the nutritionally. I mean, we talked a little bit about carbohydrates and carbohydrates are essential for women. They help well, energy for one sleeping. We need, I find eating carbohydrates at night in particular helps with sleeping, helps with hormones. So we definitely don't want to go low carb or no carb. No carb is not possible, but too lowish carb. Um, and really just you know, and, um, adding in healthy fats and healthy proteins, um, which you have to play around with a little bit, right? But um, it's just to help stabilize that blood sugar, um, helps to give us energy um, and helps us to sleep, all of those things, but we don't want that erratic blood sugar uh, along the way. So 
those are my three key, three keys rest and repair watch your exercising and just a balanced approach to your plate which includes proteins and, and healthy fats amazing i 100 percent agree with you okay and <laughs> i wanted to imprint in those in this community when you're feeling burnt out rest is the new workout mm. Because there's a direct correlation with the amount of sleep and the quality of sleep you get with your level of hunger. Those are hormones. We have hormones leptin that makes us feel full and we're like, no, I'm good. I don't need to finish the plate. And the ghrelin, so you can imagine like a little gremlin inside of you being like, ah, eat it all, eat it all. The, more, the less you sleep or the less quality of sleep you get, the more grilling you have. Mm -hmm. Hence the cravings, hence waking up in the night feeling hungry, hence not being able to stop snacking, and hence during COVID being so anxious about everything happening around us that grilling, 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 cravings, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So 100% and blood sugar balancing and making sure we're getting carbohydrates with essential fats and good quality proteins mm -hmm. and if you don't know what those are let me know put it in the comments i have a worksheet for you explaining exactly what are those and how you can pair them in your plate so that you're sure that you're balancing this um your plates your your yeah. food and, and from a carbohydrate standpoint like focus on your vegetables like those are the great source of carbohydrates which at the same time are exceptionally healing for the body too as well because those adrenal glands need extra love and minerals so that's going to come from our vegetables and well, our sea vegetables and things like that um, so don't overlook like load that plate with vegetables because it's just so abundant for our body and colorful ones as well Yes, because they will have tons of antioxidants. Antioxidants are a natural processes, um, something that we really want naturally from our food and from our metabolism to fight the free radicals, which are kind of toxins mm. created by stress in our body and can damage literally our DNA. And that's how we get Alzheimer down the line because of too much free radical um, damage on the brain. Mm -hmm. And we have amazing interactions in the group with Sel saying we have a great conversation and she loves it. And Lee saying, yes, rest is the most important thing at first. So yes, please slow down. And if you need accountability and support, you have coaches right here in front of you to help <laughs> you through that. Julie has a community. If you're more on the weight loss side, Side, go with her um, <laughs> and she's going to guide you through it if you're more on the mental health side like me who's dealing more with exhaustion anxiety overwhelm that's for me let's do it together it's possible thank you so much Julie I love this conversation it's awesome <laughs> I don't usually talk about weight management because although I have gained weight and I lost it as I was going through my burnout recovery mm -hmm. it's never been a massive priority for me and this is why I created this community for all the women who are like, yeah, sure, weight loss, but like panic attacks all the time. Right, 100%. And I mean, you know, to be um, honest too as well, I mean, my weight just has like fluctuated uh, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I haven't been extremely overweight by any means. But I think as women, you know, we want to feel uh, strong. Yes. You know, and and um resilient you know, resilient and things like that i mean one of the clients couple of the clients that i've dealt with um two of them only needed to lose you know five to ten pounds yes. not those are those aren't big numbers but they just wanted some accountability and support and consistency and so what happens is is that they get strong in the process and confident. that conf confident that exactly it exactly it confident and you just you hold yourself better so although weight you know we don't want to feel like um you know our ego in terms of <laughs> in terms of weight but it is it's a feeling and you're entitled to that if that's going to make you feel powerful and confident and feminine and sexy and whatever that may be you're entitled to that so feel how you want to feel for sure absolutely so in this group, we always promote a holistic nutrition and a holistic lifestyle, 
but sometimes it's okay to manage our signs and symptoms in the meantime as we're working on discovering the root causes and managing the root causes of our issue so we go to supplements mm -hmm. so do you have julie supplements to recommend to women who would like to manage their weight as well as their anxiety mm. This is a good one. I mean, I think every, you know, we know everyone is so different, right? So every woman, I, you know, I'll, I'll deal with a different protocol, but there is a baseline for sure as to what I would recommend for women. Um, it's funny. This is, this is the topic of the day in my group right now is supplementing. So it's good. Um, I would say, I mean, I'm sure you've talked about adaptogens. Yes. Adaptogens that help, um, you know, our, support our body uh, during times of stress. And um, so I'm big in adaptogens, but, you know, I think it's also dependent on the woman too, as well as to what she needs. Because if you're high cortisol, low cortisol, you know, sometimes it's not the same thing, not the same thing. So personally, like I like reishi or reishi, however you want to describe it. I like that at night in particular, like with a hot chocolate, tend to have that more in the in the winter. Um, L-theanine is a really good one. Um, that's part, if you've heard of it, comes from green tea as well. Um, so there's there's really a lot that you can consider, but don't overlook adaptogens because they really, especially mushrooms, uh, nature's medicine, right? And they don't taste like mushrooms. They make a wicked hot chocolate if you're into chocolate, um, but they're amazing. I like cordyceps in particular as an adaptogen because um, it's really good to boost your immune system. And so if you're dealing with burnout in particular, you really need to help, uh, you know, keep your immune system in check. Uh, number two is magnesium, like magnesium. <laughs> is a, like a game changer, like to any, any woman. I, I mean, that would be probably number one. Um, again, different, there's different types of magnesium. It really is dependent. I cycle my um, magnesium with my cycle in particular um, between uh, bisglycinate and mm -hmm. citrate, but those, you know, there's different, there's different reasons for that too, as well. Uh, but do not overlook magnesium it's going to help uh it's it's the calming it's got 400 different processes so it's you know calming um if you are somebody who deals with constipation so if you're not going to the bathroom one to three times a day it's going to help with that um the other thing is b12 i mean or b complex i should say not b12 b complex is really um really critical for women in particular who have um you know energy issues and and um you know, need to, to boost that a little bit. I think B complex is really important there. So I think those are three given your, you know, anxious women and, and weight loss. I mean, I think probiotics are important. Of course, we have to make sure our gut is really healthy. So that should be part of every woman's regimen. Um, yeah, I think those are, I think those would be the core, the core ones. What else would you recommend in terms of what are you, you recommending within your groups? Right. So in my group, I don't focus so much on weight loss. Yes. So right. For weight loss in particular related with correlated to anxiety, yes. um, be complex for sure, because I strongly believe that B12 deficiency is one, a hell of a killer when it comes to women mental health mm -hmm. and that impacts everything if you're deficient in b12 either because you're not getting enough in your diet or because you can't absorb it like it used to be before i went gluten-free and my guts were destroyed by stress and gluten intolerance i was not absorbing it and i was so deficient that i actually had no number on my blood test mm. And then uh, my doctor recommended me to take supplements and I, take, I took any random one for six months, did another blood test. I was barely, barely back up the minimals. So like this is where the quality of your supplementation oh, yeah. is critical, ladies. And if you have a gene mutation, um, gut issues, you're not getting it in your diet because B12, you can't find it on a vegan diet. I'm sorry, yeah. it's just not happening. Um, you can be deficient and it can be really bad and you may never recover from it because it's really bad. Like it, it leads to pernicious anemia, which is a damage of the nerves and it's irreversible. So that's my number one is B-complex with a really good B12 source, methylcobalamin. 
And listen, guys, we're not expecting you to know all that, right? This is why we're here, registered holistic nutritionist with a training in supplementation to really adapt to your needs and where you're out on your journey, okay? Um, so ask us. The second one that I would relate to, and I love you talking about adaptogens because I actually did an interview specifically on mushrooms with mm -hmm. one of my dear friends. So I'll put the link in the comments um, of this interview so that you guys can go to it as soon as we finish here to learn more about adaptogen is that something you're interested in um but i also want to go about chromium for the mm. cravings because i know some women are like i'm i'm sorry i'm just I, I can't resist it it's there i'm going to a supermarket i'm hungry i'm buying the chips i'm eating the chips so chromium will help you um um elevate the pressure of the cravings as you're working on um, getting a holistic nutrition based on whole foods, natural, organic. And the last one I really like is zinc. And zinc because it's been showed that we may have body dysmorphia because of a zinc deficiency. And zinc is one of the top three, four minerals that most people are deficient in because we're not getting enough in our diet. It's like iron, a magnesium, selenium, and zinc. So zinc, if we have body dysmorphia and we're obsessed with our weight, but we actually, because you're potentially not seeing as we actually are, mm. so it happens a lot for bulimic anorexic, um, zinc can really be a game changer. Yeah, it's interesting about zinc. I just started taking it again um, and it, you know, it helps with immune support. It's actually one of the number one supplements right now that um, is limited, just so you know. So if you're ordering it or something and it takes forever, there's a reason. Um, but it's, it's interesting. Um, once you start taking zinc um, on its own in particular, you'll start to have vivid dreams. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm dreaming about all these people. And I never used to dream. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a really profound um, uh, supplement. And I didn't realize that that correlation with the body. Just body more, dysmorphia, yeah. this is crazy. Um, another, like, obviously, all nutrients, I mean, whether they're vitamins, minerals, have a whole bunch of um, use in the body. So that's, that's why it's normal that zinc will help you with mental personal perception with uh, immune system it helps also with the quality of your skin if you suffer from acne it will help and and all kind of metabolism it's great for uh, sperm pro pro uh, production for males mm. so it's it's great <laughs> yeah and I, you know and I, to be to be honest it's supplementing is really <clears throat> For your followers it can be definitely overwhelming because i mean look you go through a whole foods or a natural food store and it's just full of supplements it's like well what do you need and that's the thing i mean that's why it's really important to work with somebody who can look at your life you're basically overlooking your you're, we're looking at your lifestyle um nutritionally but how you're living in it the cns in your group in particular i mean if you're dealing with anxiety and overwhelm and you know, stress and things like that you will need something vastly different than a woman that any any non-type a woman yeah yeah exactly exactly and really it's to help so it's not it's not a you know i i don't want to say there are abandoned they are uh, to use in support of some pretty big lifestyle changes, nutritional changes, and all of those things. So it's honestly, it's, well, it's a holistic approach, right? So we're grabbing from everywhere. So it, it's, it's part of the puzzle. Exactly. But it's not, it's not and it. the goal is never for you to go on a supplement and get it for the rest of your life. No. Like we don't want that. Like I know people who accumulate supplements and then I'm asking them, why do you take that? And they're like, I don't know. I read it somewhere. I, yes. I, <laughs> so yes. I just got the first supplement I could find on Amazon and got it. And I'm like, right. uh, okay, you have more fillers, binders, <sighs> laxatives in the supplement than you actually get of the supplement. Right. And I don't even know if you're absorbing it. Right. So how about we take it away? Well, yeah. And there's the other fact that, you know, you, you could try one that may not work, but you try another one and it could like it, it's, you know, adaptogens in particular, there's a long list of adaptogens you can, but they all cater to certain things. So what might work for me may not work for you. Exactly. Um, 
and you know you have to cycle you might have to cycle some and things like that to to get the benefits of it so it's it's a, i understand the overwhelm those are some baselines though like magnesium and a b complex um in all honesty are probably what every woman should have regardless <laughs> yeah. but yeah um and and um what i wanted to say is uh sorry i lost my train of thought but i totally agree and someone was asking why why b12 would be complex uh b b12 is one of the multiple b vitamins you have you have multiple b1 to b12 but then it's keeping some it's complicated yeah. but <laughs> they, all all nutrients whether it's macronutrients carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, or it's micronutrients, vitamin and uh, minerals or phytonutrients, they all work together. That's why like, there's so much more to an apple than taking vitamin C to get mm. the same amount. Like, and we want you to get supplements that have an array of good quality nutrients. And that's why the B-complex may be better than just B12. And that's why we talk about it's, it's, it's a complex that work together. There's a synergy effect is one plus one plus one equals seven. You know what I mean? Um, but sometimes if you need something specifically, you can get shots or intra, intra IVs mm. to build up your storages, get to a decent level way faster than you could ever with eating natural foods. That's why supplements can be uh, therapeutic. Um, let us know if you have any more questions. Um, we're going to start wrapping up and it was a great conversation that we had tons of interaction. Thank you so much for everyone for watching and interacting. Uh, Julie, before we get on to the rapid fire questions, do you have a message for the burning women who are watching us, interacting or watching the replay later? Well, I think just based on that convert the, the edge of this conversation is, is, you know, really don't overlook getting support because personally for myself, when I was trying to fit, I literally went two years before I went and got help. And it was like, I need to go see a naturopath. <laughs> like I need to see somebody who specializes in this. And I knew it, but instead what I did is I went on to Google and you mentioned it. Um, so there's so much out there and that's going to lead to more overwhelm when you don't have the space for it as it is. So, and you know what, and, and seek somebody that obviously knows women, right? Because unfortunately, especially when it comes to weight loss, I will tell you everything on the internet for the most part is specialized for a man in mind. Just mm. took one man, a keto diet, keto diets work great for a man, but they don't always for a woman. I will tell you that, especially if you're hitting forties plus, completely different ball game. So if you're overwhelmed and you don't know where to start, just go for help when you're ready, of course. Right. Um, and then the other thing is just don't overlook rest. I just think that when we are talking about that, you know, ambitious career driven women, we are sort of like, I don't know, built to just get it all done. Um, but, and we want to do it all, but I mean, honestly, we have to take care of ourselves first before we can take care of others. If you're a leader, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to lead, you know, other people when you're not, you're not connected yourself and you're overwhelmed and you're stressed and you're burnt out and, and all of those things. So don't overlook rest and time for you. I love it. And I love it because also women who burn out are very active but they're also givers they oh yeah give everything they have their energy their attention their care and once you start turning that inward for yourself and you invest in yourself you invest your time your energy your money you start learning stuff about yourself that transform your life and guess what you're gonna give, be able to give that back to your community your family your people that you work with and i know that it's a massive driver for my clients who get into the burnout rescue method my 12-week program i'm telling them hey you know what it might be hard to do this for yourself but if you think you're gonna learn stuff for yourself improve on yourself and then be, then be an advocate for others you're gonna that's how we're changing the world mm -hmm. and i feel like this is actually something that is a massive driver for us and that's okay 
like there's, there's a reason you and I became coaches is because we learned ourselves and we're like, I need to teach now. I need to <laughs> empower, inspire and support all the women to do the same. Yeah. And, you know, it's so interesting because if you, depending on where you work, you know, when you see a woman that's like in her full potential, doesn't that like woman just like radiate, like just has this energy about them? Um, you know, and a lot of women in the weight loss world, they lose 10, 12 pounds, whatever it may be. They like, oh my God, I can see myself wearing those clothes. You put them on, you feel, you feel like a, a different a billion dollar. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, the thing about it is, is you have to know that that's possible for you too, as well. You know, like it's a difference between uh, just do, doing it and making the changes, but actually believing you can do it. And then you get there. <laughs> it's like, it's the best thing in the world. So and learning, learning about our hormones or metabolism or brain. I mean, mm. we can get really deep into that. And it's so empowering to know exactly. So next time someone tells us something completely wrong, we can be like, huh, you don't know anything, do you? Yeah, yeah, totally. And people were like, <laughs> so funny. what do you think? What do you think? What should I do? What do you think? And they're like, no know your shit for yourself so okay. yeah exactly amazing yeah. thank you so much uh people have had a great time we had some a couple of thank yous um and now let's wrap up with rapid fire questions so i'm asking you the question i'm not commenting i just want to get you to know you better uh, for myself and for the community so julie what is your biggest dream today i mean I, I honestly, I lead with happiness. I just want to live, live a big life personally and how that, how that fills itself in I'm game for, um, ultimately my, my, at the core for me is to empower and educate women to also live a full life. So those are two things, but come together. I think <laughs> amazing. What is your biggest goal for 2020 to get out of 2020? <laughs> Fair enough. And we're half halfway through the year, people. Can you believe that? My God, if I told you what's, I mean, besides the obvious that's happened to all of us, this has been, a, this has been a tough year for me too as well. But um, I think my, yeah, my big goal is, I'm, I'm kind of in a, a tricky situation. Um, obviously my business is, is doing well, but I also have a day job and I was laid off from my day job. Um, and so I don't know where that will be. So I'm kind of in limbo. So right now it's really just the focus on, you know, empowering and educating as many people as, as many women as they can potentially, you know, uh, within this year to step into their full potential. Right. Um, how do you like to be creative? Mornings, mornings alone um is really I have to and I, I don't know if you're big on more like morning and evening rituals but my morning rituals are razor sharp in order for me I'm an introvert um so I need some time alone in order for me to serve um so I spend a lot a lot of my you know first 15 20 minutes alone before my husband gets up but he's pretty tame so um you know, I, I just need that time alone to connect with myself, connect in how I'm feeling. How do I want to feel today? And then build from there. Gotcha. And who is inspiring you today? Uh, my clients obviously are <laughs> always inspiring me because I think sometimes, I, I mean, like you, we're, we're there to, to show women that they can do and achieve what they want. And I love to see that they actually start to believe that themselves and then they do it. And then you're like, see, I told you so. <laughs> I know. It's so, hard. it's so hard to hold it back being like, uh, I told you. You know, it's so weird because this is the thing. And I've always been told that I don't stand on my own soapbox enough. But when I get, you know, all these accolades uh, from women, it's like, yeah, you know, thank you, Julie, you did it. And I'm like, no, I didn't do it. You are the one that implemented maybe what I, ta what I taught you. But you knew what to do the whole time right? Like you, you knew, you knew what you needed to do and you did it. And that's, that's the part where, you know, women can just see that they, it was them all along. Yeah. And I get, that's big. That's big for me right now. So much power, so much confidence. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are about. And shout out to both our clients, to Julie and I, you guys are amazing. We're so happy to work with, to be working with you and let's keep this thing going. It never yes. stops. Never stops. Neither is 2020, but <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you. Thank you everyone for watching and watching the replay. If you have any questions for me later on or Julie, put them in the comments as you're watching the replay. It's all good. We'll interact with you as soon as we can. We're here to help you. We're here to support you. And it, I, as we said, it never stops. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good day and talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.